Hey, my friends, JT DeBolt is here with you today for the Elite Marketing Pro Daily Dose of Awesome, your 15 minutes of inspiration, education, motivation, everything you need to help you get your day started off right. And I want to say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whatever time it is for you, no matter where you might be tuning in from on the Big Blue Marble. Thank you for joining us here each and every single Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And this is where you want to come five days a week. We're going to have a new mentor here each and every single day, and it's my privilege to be here with you today to talk to you about something super important. And as you're jumping out here, let me know where you are tuning in from on the Big Blue Marble. Always a privilege to have my friends from all around the globe. Great to see you guys out there. Hey, Jill, great to see you. Heather calling in from Texas. Uh, let's see, Melinda from Central uh, Pennsylvania, awesome. Larry, Emily, Don, great to see you guys. Sally calling in from or tuning in from Louisiana, awesome. So I have a question for you, and I want you to be completely honest with yourself on this, and I would love your participation on this. Pay attention if you've ever experienced the following. Let's say that you're working on something big, something important. I don't know, maybe you're building your business, maybe you're building your future here, you're building your empire, but you're working on something important, something significant, something that's big and important to you. And along that path, perhaps you're not quite yet seeing the results that you had imagined. Now, it doesn't mean it's because you're not working hard. In fact, you have been busting your hump, all right? Have you ever felt exhausted, depleted, mentally, emotionally, physically depleted? Have you ever felt like you're out of ideas? Or even, even worse, not only are you out of ideas, but all of a sudden you start getting these other big ideas that seem to be taking you off the main path. They're very alluring, right? They're very seductive. You're thinking to yourself, man, that would be awesome. But I'll have to put this thing aside for right now. Maybe you've had that experience. Have you ever started to feel like all the doubters and the naysayers, those voices that keep playing over like a tape in your head, all of a sudden they start sounding like they're making sense? Have you ever had the experience where Maybe your, your feeling of hope is starting to dwindle. Maybe you've even thought about throwing in the towel. If you've ever felt any of these, one or all of them, I want you to type a one in the chat box. One in the chat box if you've ever felt that sense of complete exhaustion, that feeling like you're completely out of ideas, like you feel like you've tried everything and nothing seems to be working. And then all, all of a sudden, perhaps you feel like you've got this other spark, this great idea, which is going to take you completely off track. Maybe you've felt that those voices of the naysayers and the doubters are right. Maybe they're starting to make sense. Maybe you've even felt like you're losing hope. Maybe you've even felt like throwing in the towel. If you've ever felt one or all of those type of one in, if you've never felt any of them, ever, never, not one of them, type of zero. I'm just curious if there are any people out there that have never felt anything that I've just described on your path to your success. I'm seeing a lot of ones, not seeing too many zeros. Okay, so I have some really awesome news for you, all right? Hey, Brandy, what's up? I see Brandy Shaver, Jill. I see Teresa. I see lots of cool people. Steve out there, thanks for joining us. Here's the great news. Here is the beautiful news. First and foremost, let's talk about the word success because the word success is a little bit misleading. We all in our lives have a different version of it, a different definition of what that word means, right? So for Jill, her definition is going to be different than Don's and Steve's going to be different than Brandy's. And, you know, Dale's going to have a different, a different definition than anybody that he's even, in, you know, surrounding himself with in his life. And that's the cool part. The beautiful part is that we as human beings define success differently, and it's a very deeply personal definition. If you are pursuing something big and of significance, you are naturally going to feel one or all of these symptoms. One or, five, one or all of these five or six, however many I listed, these are great telltale signs that you are about to succeed. And by succeed, I mean you're about to break through to that next level. Here's what I mean. When a, uh, when a caterpillar goes into a cocoon, it's in a very tight, packed, uh, you know, package. And so it's very difficult to break through. And as that, as that uh, caterpillar starts to grow and starts to transform itself into a butterfly, it has to push against the walls of that cocoon. And it's a very painful experience, apparently. I've never been a, a, a caterpillar, so I couldn't tell you if it hurts. But apparently, it, it, there's a lot of pain involved. And because what that, what that about to be butterfly is doing is actually building its muscles so that it can support the weight 
of its wings and to be able to support its own weight and to be able to fly and to catch the wind and all these kinds of things that it's going to have to do as a as a butterfly or so the theory goes if you talk to uh you know bug experts and people that know these things the point is this is that after it acc accumulates enough muscle enough strength and enough capability then it breaks through it breaks out of that cocoon and it becomes the beautiful butterfly that it was destined to be now here's the great news for you if you've ever felt that sense of being purely exhausted, chances are that you've been working really hard on something you're passionate about, something that you care about, something that matters, and you've poured so much of yourself in that you're depleted. That's the good news. Now, the not so great news is that you have to do something about it. So my first strategy for you today, the first to do step, the first action item is to make sure that you're giving yourself on a daily basis an opportunity to recharge yourself. Now, I recommend, I, I talk about the Pomodoro technique quite a bit. That means that if you're working on something, you work on just one task at a time because multitasking will actually wear you out faster than just about anything. But you work on one thing at a time for a set period of time. I recommend between 20 to 50 minutes. So if you're somebody who struggles with focus, maybe you just start focusing for just 20 minutes on one thing or a half hour. But at the end of that hard work where you focus on just one thing, that deep work, then you take a 10-minute break. Now, that 10-minute break has got to be designed where you don't do anything. You're not checking your email. You're not going on social media. You're not checking your, your text messages. You're giving your brain, your body, your soul a chance to recharge. This is your opportunity to take a, like a 10-minute vacation, if you will. I also recommend doing something physical. Now, I love to work out. I have to be completely transparent. I've had a very busy morning. I haven't had my chance to get my workout in yet, but that's coming up here in the next several minutes. When you work out, when you physically move your body, you might be saying to yourself, but JT, doesn't that deplete you? And the answer is yes, temporarily. But what it actually does is revive you. It actually fuels you. It gets that oxygen blowing through your blood system and allows your muscle tissues and your body tissues to regenerate and rejuvenate. So make sure you're doing something physical and also make sure you do something that you love to do. If you love to listen to music or play music, if you love to listen to comedy or maybe even perform comedy, uh, if you're somebody who likes to write or read, something that, that fuels your body I, or fuels your mind and soul, I would recommend staying away from things that weigh you down, like the news. There's never anything really great on the news because it's not designed to recharge you, okay? Uh, if you're somebody who's really super into that kind of stuff, uh, you know, go for it, but uh, you've been warned. Okay, so if you've ever felt exhausted, chances are it's because you've been working hard just like that caterpillar trying to break out of the chrysalis to become that beautiful butterfly. If you've ever felt that sense that you've tried everything, you're saying to yourself, I'm all out of ideas. Here's the good news. You haven't tried everything. If you had tried everything, you would succeed. There's a great way of thinking about this. It's never over until it's over, right? It's never over until you decide that it's over. You can declare when it's over. If it hasn't worked out, stand by, it's about to break out. You just have to give yourself an opportunity to stick in there long enough. And the one thing that I would tell you about this is that what I like to do, anytime I feel like I'm out of ideas, I never say to myself, I've tried everything because that's simply not true. That's just not accurate. But what I do say to myself is, I've tried everything that I know to do. What might I do differently? Who might I reach out to? And what might I ask them? And when I think about it in terms of that, when I think to myself, okay, now what might I do differently? The chances are that you're going to come at something from a different perspective and say, you know what, geez, I hadn't thought of it that way. Let's try this. It might be something completely unscripted. It might be something that you've never done before. It might be something that uh, is going to push you past your comfort zone, take you outside your comfort box. But when you do that, you just might find yourself breaking out of that cocoon, so to speak, and really be able to spread your wings and soar. So if you feel like you're out of ideas, go to a place of inspiration. Again, personally, I love to work out hard. I'm not talking about just kind of a light jog or a little bit of a sweat. I'm talking about that point where I feel like I'm absolutely going to pass out or maybe even lose my lunch. If I work out that hard, uh, I usually find some great ideas and solutions to the challenges I'm up against. And then, the, of course, the shower afterwards. Now, I personally love to take ice, ice showers, like cold showers, but it's getting a little bit chilly here in the Pacific Northwest. So sometimes that nice hot steam shower feels pretty good and it unlocks a lot of great ideas. That's what works for me. The question is what works for you. I want to know what you do. Chat, type it into the chat box. Type into the chat box what you do to unlock your creativity because what you do to unlock your creativity may help somebody else out. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to help each other out in this awesome community called Elite Marketing Pro. So go ahead and type into your chat box some of your strategies and techniques that you use to unlock your creativity. Now, 
Here's the other thing that I was talking about. If all of a sudden you're up against the stops, you're exhausted, you're tired, you're kind of, maybe you're even a little bit heartbroken because things aren't going the way you thought they were going to go. You feel like you've tried everything and then all of a sudden, shazam, you've got this amazing idea, but you know deep down inside that it's the kind of idea that's taking you off the path, right? You're thinking to yourself, instead of building my business, instead of working on my Facebook ads, what if I went out and opened up a bakery? Or what if I went into uh, join the circus? You know, like all of a sudden you get this like inspiration. You're like, wow, that'd be pretty cool. But you know deep down inside that it's taking you off your path. Okay. If that's ever happened to you, here's the great news. Go with it for a temporary time. Just allow yourself to indulge that little fantasy. I'll let you know what my personal fantasy is here in just a second. But I want to let you know that there's an actual scientific backing to this. It's okay to fantasize about things that are probably not in your best interest, right? Something that you may never do, or, or perhaps it is something that you can do, and you use your current path, your current journey, your current mission to help get you there. So what is my personal fantasy? First of all, I want to know, is anybody typing in here? My uh, chat box is a little bit uh, uh, slowed down. So if you guys have been adding your, your suggestions on how to unlock your creativity, I want to say thank you very much for that. I'm not seeing them right now. It'll probably unlock itself in just a moment. So what's my little fantasy? Ever since I was a kid, those of you that know me, know that my dream was to be a Blue Angel. I wanted to fly for the U.S. Navy's uh, flight demonstration team, the Blue Angels. I wanted to be in air shows. I wanted to do all that cool, dynamic stuff. And it didn't end up working out for me because the path that was selected for me by the U.S. Navy was to fly surveillance and reconnaissance. So you had to be a fighter jet pilot in order to go be a Blue Angel. I did not fly fighter jets. I flew surveillance and reconnaissance. It was still an awesome career. But that dream is still alive in the heart and chest of old JT right here. So... My fantasy is to own my own jet, my own, my own, and you can actually buy these things for about the cost of a high-end exotic sports car. They're not, you know, you, it's not this like tens of hundreds of millions of dollars for a fighter jet. And so my thought was, man, it would be so awesome to have my own jet and to get proficient enough and to get trained enough and to get qualified to be an air show demonstration pilot and go fly around and do these things. Now, it's a pretty extraordinary, fantastic dream. Fantastic in the sense that it is like borderline fantasy. But here's the thing, when I'm working really hard on something and I'm up against the stops or I have a frustrating thing like something that just happened to me yesterday, something that I thought was a sure thing, something I thought it was a slam dunk, a home run, I thought we were going to have a great outcome from yesterday's uh, effort and it ended up being a huge dud because of a technical error on, our, on my part, I sit back and say to myself, remember that dream about being an air show pilot, flying your own jet. Now get your ass back to work and make it happen. Because I know that my dreams are fueled by my ability to go out and serve other people, to help lead people and help take them to a new level in their business, their career, and their life. And when I do that, then all the dreams that I have for myself are reinstigated. So those little daydreams that you have that seem like a brilliant idea that might be pulling you off your bigger mission, don't necessarily put those away. Don't necessarily shove them in a box and say, forget it, go away. But remember this, don't allow them to become distractions either. It's kind of a nice mental vacation to think, man, it would be pretty cool to be a rock star or to be a this or to be a that or to go to the Great Wall of China and think about those dreams that may not necessarily be what you should be working on now, but they, by gosh, they can absolutely fuel you right now mentally, emotionally, spiritually and get you back on track. Now, I also talked about the idea that that little tape inside your head starts playing, right? The voices of those people who along your path, maybe it's been fairly recently, maybe it's been all your entire path that told you, you can't do this. You'll never do this. This is a ridiculous dream. Give it up. Get a job. Grow up, right? All those things. You start hearing the replay, the echoes of those voices in your head at that time when you're just about to break through. It's really crazy, but I want you to do this. This is my little strategy for you when those voices come up. I want you to use them as fuel. Instead of using them as an anchor to hold you down, to, to break your heart again, to bruise your soul, I want you to use it as fire. I actually got one of the most amazing, crappy emails from a person that I held in high regard, a guy that was almost a mentor to me, a business mentor. And he sent me this email. It was a scathing email about three years ago. I have never gotten rid of that email. And there are times where I'm feeling down. There are times where things aren't going the way I thought they would go. And it's easy to kind of allow yourself to snowball into a, a pit of despair. But I'll look at that email and, man, that pisses me off. 
it fires me up and I think to myself, I'm going to prove this guy wrong. Not for the sake of proving him wrong, right? It's not about that. It's not about revenge. It's not about trying to prove people wrong so you can stuff their ego in the mud. But it's about proving yourself right. And it's about demonstrating through your actions. It's about demonstrating through your resilience. It's about demonstrating through your courage that you have what it takes to succeed because, my friend, you do. You do. So when you're starting to feel those feelings of like, man, maybe the haters and the naysayers were right. Maybe they had a point. What was I thinking? Go back and listen to the voice again. Laugh. Kick your feet up and say, it's time for the next chapter. It's time for the next round. Ding, ding. Let's get going. Get your dukes up. Get yourself back to work. And of course, if you start to feel yourself losing hope, if you start to feel like that sense, like maybe it's time to turn in, maybe throw in the towel. Remember this. This is not just about you, all right? You are helping a lot of people. You have the capacity to help a lot of people. That's the beautiful thing about this industry. That's the beautiful thing about the business that you're working on. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter where you're at right now. The temporary situation you're in does not dictate your value to the world. It doesn't dictate your worth as a human being. It doesn't even mean, it doesn't even, it doesn't even indicate who you are or what you're capable of. It just means that right now, Right now, it may not be the result you're looking for. And those temporary feelings of wanting to drop out, they're going to pass. Here's the beautiful thing. The longer you stick in, the longer you hang in with your dream, the more opportunities you have to serve other people. These lessons, these ass kickings that you get, these punches to the face, these punches to the gut, the punches to the soul are meant to make you stronger, better, and more capable. And that's exactly what they're designed to do. So if you ever feel like you're exhausted, wiped out, if you ever feel like you're out of ideas, or if all of a sudden you have some crazy, fantastic idea that's going to take you off the beaten path, if you ever feel like those voices that you've been hearing from the naysayers, the haters, the doubters are starting to make sense, if you ever feel like your hope is dropping off, and if you've ever felt like throwing in the towel, smile, you're about to break through. You're about to go to a whole new level, but you got to believe, you got to stick in, and you got to keep going. I believe in you, my friends. Now go out there and kick ass, take names, and have an amazing day. We'll be coming back at you again tomorrow with another episode, another dose of the Daily Dose of Awesome. Looking forward to being a part of that soon. All right, my friends, have an amazing day, and remember, no matter what course you fly in life, fly high, fly fast, and fly far. We'll talk to you soon.